2013 is here. 2012 is coming on. Christ has declared freedom in this place. We have declared freedom over ourselves. So no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. If you believe it, mean it. Let the enemy hear. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Devil better listen up. We mean business. Come on, say it again. No more shackles, no more, no more, no more. You are free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. You are free. Yeah. Come on, declare freedom over that person. When it comes, say you are. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. You are free. Yeah. Now come on, sing it again over yourself. No more shackles. his way in this service. Will you in your own way right now surrender everything to the Lord? Surrender everything. Bring everything in submission to the mind of Christ and to the authority of Christ. Our thoughts, God, may you take control. Holy Spirit, 
May you have your way in this place today, whatever it is that you're wanting to do. Father, may freedom reign. May you, oh God, have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Come on, will you say, Holy Spirit?
you love it, how good he's been. you love him today, how good he's been to you. Lord, we worship you in this place. We thank you, O oh God, for your holy presence here. We thank you, O oh God, for the moving of your spirit in this place today. We love you, Jesus. We exalt you. We honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. Oh, how we love you. How we love you, Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord. So wonderful, so awesome, our Lord. So glorious. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. 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 Well, you and I need to take a moment and respond to that, don't we? So why don't you go ahead and leave it here. Just say, Lord, I just turn it over to you today. Cast all my cares, my worries, my burdens. Go ahead and do that right now. Be specific about it. Be specific about it. Lord, I just leave it with you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. Glory be to God. Yeah. You're not built to carry it. He is. Just cast it on the Lord today. Hallelujah. Praise His name. Praise be to your name. bless you today, Father. Thank you that you carry it all. Thank you that we leave here today unburdened in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't the Lord good? Aren't you thankful for the freedom and liberty in this place today? Go ahead, give Him praise. He deserves your praise. He deserves the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. 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 You know, on the heels of that word, let me just remind you about six other words. Don't worry. God first. God's rule. You were here last Sunday, that was it. That was the crux of it all. Don't worry. God first. God's rule. Come on, say it with me. Don't worry. God first. God's rule. Say it again. Don't worry. God first. God's rule. One more time. Don't worry. God first. God's rule. Amen. Amen. Last week, Sunday, I told you, why don't you just do some random acts of kindness? And I gave out some suggestions like, you know, when you go through the tunnel, those that don't have easy pass, pay for yourself and then pay for the person in back of you. Talked about going through drive through things of that nature. How many of you did a random act of kindness this past week? Look at you, applying the Word of God. Isn't that awesome? How many of you say it worked? Didn't you feel good doing that? Jackie sent in a testimony about that. It was pretty cool. Listen to her. She's Now she's breaking in a sweat. Don't worry, honey. Don't worry. God first, God's rule. But it'll be an encouragement. Tell everybody what happened. I went oh, okay. I went through the drive-thru at Chick-fil-A, and when I went to pay, the lady told me that the person in front of me had already paid. So I was... For, for me. So I was very happy. I felt very blessed. So that enabled me to bless the person behind me. So it was just a blessing for me and for the person behind me. Wow. Now, wouldn't that be cool if that just kind of went on down the line a little bit? Is there anybody in here that went through a Chick-fil-A this week and paid for the person in back of you? Did anybody do that here? I didn't ask in the first service. Maybe they were in the first service. I thought that person had to be at Life Source International Church last week that paid for her meal. Praise God. Oh, my goodness. We need to fill the earth with God's love. Amen? Just things like that can make a difference. Hallelujah. There's a real sweet presence of God here today. It just permeated the 9 o'clock service. And uh, we want to just continue in the flow of what God's doing here. The word of the Lord says, 
This is yesterday's one-year Bible reading in the Proverbs. Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10. Verse number 9 says, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. What a promise we have from God. Your barns will be filled with plenty. Your vats will overflow with new wine. I mean, new wine. There will be a continual release and flow. God will make sure that the containers are full. God will make sure that the needs are taken care of. How? By verse 9, honoring the Lord with your substance and the first fruits. Somebody say first fruits of all your increase. Now, I believe that the first fruits is, includes the tithe, but I've taught you over the years that it's the first of anything that comes in. I've challenged people over the years that when they get a new job, when they get a new job, listen to me, folks. When you get a new job, take the first paycheck and instead of it using it for yourself, give that whole first paycheck away. Give it to God. It's the first fruits of your increase. And see if God doesn't just breathe on that and bless you. First fruits of your increase. It's kind of saying to God, God, this job you gave it to me, I'm giving it all back to you. Everything, this all belongs to you. And then if you'll purpose to tithe on that afterward, watch God do some incredible things in your life. I believe God's word is true. If he tells me to honor him with my substance and the first fruits of my increase, then I believe that he is going to cause my containers to be full and my vats to overflow. Do you believe the word of the Lord? I surely do. I really do. So we're going to worship God in giving. We're going to do it a little different. Right now our kids are going to uh, get ready to go to kid life right after I pray. And after I pray, as I release them, I want to release you to give today. Uh, those of you that are new here, and we've got a lot of new people that are coming to the church uh, over the last several weeks, last month or so. And so as you, if you haven't learned already, we don't pass plates here. Uh, I do a giving teaching, but I don't shove it in your face. It's up to you to give. Um, and so there are numbers of ways to do that. We have containers throughout the sanctuary on the platform, those two black containers there, and same here in the back of these uh, three aisles, you'll see desks with giving containers there, and also at the balcony main exits, and many people choose to give online, so just because somebody doesn't pop out of their seat today doesn't mean that they're not giving, they may have already done so online uh, early this week, and there are numbers of people that set it up automatically, it just comes, so give at any time except during the delivery of the message. And uh, I know God's blessing will rest upon you mightily. I, I want us to just continue in the flow of what the Lord is doing. And I, I believe I have a word for you today. Nine o'clock was powerful. And uh, I, was, I was going and had a couple directions to go in. But I feel like I have a specific word to share with you. And I'm going to do that in just a moment. And then we're going to have prayer uh, for, for everybody here in the house today. So let, let's, let's thank God that we can honor Him today. Your giving honors God. You know, there are different ways to honor God. I believe you being in the house of the Lord honors God. I believe your worship, you know, as we're singing, I worship you, and I believe that honors God. And your giving today honors Him as well. Father, bless the people today according to your word. May their containers be full. May their containers overflow with blessing and abundance. God, as people give today, we're honoring you because you're so deserving and worthy of it. We bless you today. We exalt you today. We magnify you today. In Jesus' holy name, let everybody say a good amen. Amen. Our kids are headed to kid life.
Feel free to worship and give him at this time. While, while this is going on, let me just say this because I may not get another chance because of the flow of what's going on here. But tomorrow night prayer at 7 o'clock, be here for our corporate prayer time. It's very powerful. If you know people who are working on Sundays, tell them they can still have church on Monday nights, okay? So let them know that they can be here from 7 to 8 for prayer. Also, tonight is our student life ministry relaunch. Feel free to come and give if you want to while I'm talking to you. Our student life relaunch is tonight at 6 o'clock. I'll be speaking in the gymnasium. Just come tonight at 6. Come to the gymnasium next door to support our student life ministry. We want the gymnasium to be packed. So come tonight for a great time. Uh, and the word of the Lord that I'll be giving to you. God's going to do a great work tonight at, at Student Life, 6 o'clock. And then uh, in two weeks, we're hosting the concert of prayer here. Last Saturday of the month from 9 to 3. Come out for a day of prayer and worship. Ricardo Sanchez will be leading the worship that day. He'll also be with us the last Sunday of the month as well. May the Lord bless you as you worship him today.
on if you know him as Savior, Healer, and Deliverer. Thank you today. Thank, Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Healer. Thank you, my Deliverer. I worship you, Lord. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Healer. Thank you, my Somebody thank him today. We worship you, Lord. The last couple of days, one year Bible reading. It's been some powerful, powerful teaching. In Matthew chapter 8, I want to share just three verses with you. It comes on the heels of a masterpiece message by Jesus called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus teaches some very profound spiritual lessons throughout the Sermon on the Mount. He's having a church service. He concludes his teaching, but the ministry doesn't stop there. It says in verse number 1 of chapter 8, when he had come down from the mountain, Great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Now I want you to see the contrast here in verses 1 and 2. Great multitudes followed him, but a leper came and worshipped him. Great multitudes came and followed him. But a leper came and worshipped him. Hmm. There are two types of people in this sanctuary today. You're either part of the crowd or you're a worshiper. We spent the last hour just in an attitude of worship before God. You know, I'm glad I'm a worshiper. I'm glad I love to praise God. Because if I were not, I would just sit here and just view the crowd. And if I looked at you, you might inspire me or discourage me. Not sure which. But I keep my eyes on the Lord. And when they start singing, you're my healer, you're my deliverer. Oh, my goodness. How can you not? Listen, if God has never saved you, if he's never healed you, and if he's never delivered you, then sit there like a bump on a log. But if God has done anything in your life, if God has ever rescued you, if God has ever showed up and set you free or provided for you or healed your body and kept you from dying, you ought to give Him praise. He is worthy of your worship. Come on, Life Source. Be a worshiping church today. Hallelujah. You can be seated. How? Listen, the word great multitudes followed him. 
The word followed means that they accompanied him. They were just along for the ride. He was going along, so they went along. They were curious. Part of the crowd. It was interesting. Who knows? I mean, some of them may have had conversations. Come on, let's go see what this guy is about. I've heard some incredible things. Let's just check it out. So here they go. They were accompanying him. But one, one stood out and worshipped him. Went beyond following him. Went beyond accompanying him. Went beyond just being there. Are you just here today? Or are you worshipping? Oh, there's a big difference. There's a big difference. The worshiper stood out. And the worshiper left wherever he was different than when he showed up. Listen, when you come to the house of God, don't be a spectator. Don't be an onlooker. Don't stand out on the outskirts and gaze in, but jump in there and worship God in spirit and in truth. Listen, folks, don't wait for the right atmosphere, the right song, the right whatever. When the King of glory is present, when the King of kings is there, He's the object and the, of your attention. He deserves the preeminence. There is no other personality no other thing going on that deserves the eminence. He has the preeminence. He is the King of kings, the Lord of glory. Begin to worship Him. Begin to exalt Him. Begin to magnify Him and see if He will not come along side of you and touch you. Listen. It is significant. The Bible doesn't say, and behold, a person came and worshipped him. An individual came. The Bible says specifically, a leper came and worshipped him. Now why is that significant? Because in those days, lepers were unclean. People would back away. If a leper came along, they would cry out, unclean, unclean. A leper would have to announce themselves. Everybody backed away. The leper had to push past his embarrassment, his humiliation, and his pain in order to come and present himself before the Lord. I guarantee you there were people that were nearby who were going, oh my goodness. And they, and they, and they were shocked. I guarantee that the leper probably had a war going on in his mind. Should I? They're going to hate me for this. I'm not welcome. I'm not accepted. I have a disease. Sometimes, folks, when you come into the house of God, you have obstacles in your life that could prevent you from worshiping the Lord. But I'm here to tell you today that there are times when you have to push past the embarrassment. You have to push past the pain. And you've just got to press in and say, Lord, you're the one I'm coming to. I recognize your presence and I need your help. And he said to him, Lord, if you are willing, you can change me. You can make me clean. 
I can leave here different. If you're willing, you can do this. And verse 3, look at what verse 3 says. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him. Now I want you to hear me. And he said, I'm willing, be cleansed. Immediately, somebody say immediately. His leprosy was cleansed. Listen. This was significant that Jesus put out his hand and touched him. Uh, Everything the Lord does is purposeful. No one would dare touch a leper. You're out of your mind. You'd be crazy to do that. We know from the Gospels and the different accounts of what Jesus did and the miracles and the healings that all Jesus had to do was just speak. All Jesus would have had to do is say, leprosy be gone. After all, he stood before a tomb one day and all he had to do was say, Lazarus, come forth. He didn't even have to go inside the tomb and touch the dead corpse. All he had to do was speak life and tell Lazarus, get up out of that tomb. Are you hearing me today? But Jesus decided to touch the man. Jesus will touch the people nobody else will touch. Jesus will love the people nobody else loves. Jesus will have compassion on the people nobody else will have compassion. Jesus will welcome those that nobody else wants to welcome. Jesus will pull those in that are on the outside. He touched this man purposefully. Those standing by would see compassion and love in action. They would see someone who was willing to touch those that nobody else would touch. He said, I'm willing to be cleansed. The Bible says immediately. Somebody say again immediately. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now, in the 9 o'clock service, at that point, I just began to jump up and down and rejoice. I just began to praise God in the 9 o'clock service spontaneously. I hadn't even planned it, but when I read that, something just welled up inside of me. And I'll tell you what it was. A faith that is still in this service today at 11 o'clock. A faith rose up in my life and in my lips and in my heart that there, that God had and immediately here for people today. There is an an immediately in this house today for people. You've been, some of you have been dealing with stuff for months. Some of you have been dealing with stuff with, for weeks. Some of you have been dealing with stuff for years. And I'm here to tell you today that God wants to release and immediately in your life today. I believe with all of my heart that some of your stuff is going to come to a close today. That Jesus has an immediately for you. He's going to touch you nobody else might have. He's going to minister to you. He's going to heal you. He's going to set you free. You're going to get it immediately today. And it's all because that Jesus loves you. And he's here to touch you today. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody bless the Lord and worship him today. Don't be like the crowd. Be like the leper who worshipped him. Hallelujah. Oh God, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
worshiping and you're worshiping. If you're in this building today, in the balcony, the main floor, and you need an immediately in your life, get out of your seat and come down here quickly. Come down here immediately. If you're in need of an immediate in your life, get down here as quickly as you can. And when you come, just begin to worship Him. Oh! Listen, I want everybody who has come forward, I want you in just a moment to put your prayer within the context of the leper's prayer. What do you mean, Pastor? The leper said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Now, I want you to frame your prayer to the Lord in the same way. Lord, if you're willing, you can make me, and then you fill in the blank. Whatever your need is, you can heal my blood disease. You can heal my liver. You can heal my heart. You can heal my diabetes. You can heal my sickness, my infirmity, my arthritis. You can. You can heal my marriage. You can, and then you fill it in. Lord, if you're willing, you can, and here's what I believe. I believe the scriptures that say the Lord is no respecter of persons, meaning he doesn't favor one over another. And I'm standing on the premise today, Jesus, if you did it for the leper, you'll do it for us. If you did it for the leper, you'll do it for me. I believe today that you are willing. Because notice what Jesus responded, how he responded. He said, I am willing. Be cleansed. I want you to know he's willing today. He's willing today. Now I'm going to come and I'm going to lay my hands on you. Every person that has come forward, I'm going to lay my hands on you. And I'm just going to simply pray a simple prayer. It might only be one word. It's going to be immediate. You need an immediate today from God. I believe that he'll deliver it to you. I want those of you that are in the congregation in the balcony of the main floor, I want you to join me in praying in faith. We're going to believe God together. And here's what we're going to do. When I'm finished praying with everybody here, and I want the staff, I want the prophetic team to come and join me, and uh, the guys are moving through. Troy's helping us to get things in order here. So just kind of pay attention to him. It'll give me room to get between you and the people in front of you, okay? So we're going to get that organized. But when I'm finished praying with everybody, then I'm going to pray for every person in this sanctuary today. I'm going to lay my hands on you. We're going to have people just come down the middle aisle right at when I'm finished praying with everybody. And I'm going to pray over you because I want God to bless you this year. Okay? And we'll get through this. Those of you that are in the balcony, that are kind of going up the stairwell here, I want you to hang in here. Okay? Because when I'm finished praying for these individuals, it'll make room for you guys to come down in here. We'll not miss you. Okay? I promise. We're going to pray for everybody today. Now, the leper came and worshipped. I want everybody here, would you just lift up your hands to heaven and just begin to worship him right now as we begin to pray? Just begin to worship him right now.